Hi everyone. Um, today I'm going to do a haul video for you. I only just received this order. It's from um, the SSA, which is the Society for All Artists here in the UK. Um, now I actually managed to get a pretty good deal. I had 2,250 um, loads of points saved and they recently had a members um, sale. Um, I'm sorry, a members coupon which was for 15% off if you spent over £100. It worked out that I saved somewhere in the region of £43 and that. So when you see what's here you will think oh that's quite a lot of stuff. But um, I wanted some of it for quite a while and I was saving up the order and then just so happened that I managed to get a good deal. So. Um, well, let's get started. I'll start first all with the big palette, which is this bottom one. Okay, I wanted a palette from the colours that I'm about to show you. Um, it had to be big enough to um, make, have mix enough mixing space. So this one, you could use this lid as a mixing space. And then there's an inside lid as well, which you could use as a mixing space. And then this is the palette itself. So it's got... 16 little wells, which are these ones, and then it's got four big ones. Let me just try and move the camera out a little bit so you can see what I mean. Sorry, I'll get moved out of the way. So it's a bit um, close in, but um, and then obviously it's got a big mixing space here. So um, I wanted it big enough to house all the colours I really liked which are these ones and then I've still got some ones that I really really couldn't do without so I can mix them together in the palette okay so oh, and it's got flippy downsides and um, this blue seal here it's a rubber seal to keep the air out so it should mean that they stay cleaner and fresher okay I have opened it just to check where things in there but I haven't actually opened any of the packaging So I've got a four packs of these, which are um, the half pan empty pans. So three, four. So there's six in each. And I've got four of them. Okay. This was the Nesting Set in pink. Now this one's to support um, breast cancer. This one was the set they sell for £8.99, but you got an extra um, masking fluid ink thing. Sorry, a masking fluid pot. This one also contains other stuff. Let's get it open. I'll show you what's in it. Sorry about the wrapping. Okay. So, first of all, this is a ruling pen. Okay. So, show you what this looks like. Okay, now I've never actually used a ruling pen, but this is what it looks like. Um, I'm not really sure what this turny bit does, so if anybody does know and wants to let me know, just leave me a comment and I'd be very grateful. I will be googling, so let's hope I can find something. Um, so it says at the on the side, SCA ruling pen. Um, no, it's got this tiny bit, whatever that does. It's a nice cute little case that it comes in. Uh, <coughs> pardon me. There's a masking fluid brush set. Um, and this is in size small, medium and large. So let's open these. Again, sorry about the packaging noises. Okay, so this is the large. Then we have the medium. And then we have the small. Okay. Then these are our two pots of masking fluid. And the thing I like about this is not only does it support um, breast cancer, but it's pink so that when it's on the paper you can still see what it, where it is. Whereas if it's just the clear one, you can't see it. And in the years you get... I did know at some point. 60 mil. So I've got 120 mil of masking fluid. Okay, and the last thing in the set is masking. I actually have got a piece of this, um, and it is good stuff. It also removes um, the adhesive on sort of 
tacky masks and stuff like that. Okay, so let's just move that out of the way. Uh, I hope this bag's empty. Yep. Okay. Let me show you the brush I got. I got one other brush. Um, I got this one. Let me take the plastic off. There we go. Right, this is an SAA large oval wash. Um, this one is, I believe, synthetic. I think the silver range is synthetic. Um, I just wanted an oval wash brush. It didn't matter to me what sort of um, material it was made of. I just wanted it to be a wash brush. Now, obviously, I've not used it, so I've not broken it in the ends, and I'm not going to um, unless I've got some hot water. I don't want it to snap the, the fibres. Okay. Now then next. I'm not sure if anybody's seen, actually seen, um, the the 5 mil paints by Daniel Smith. Um, but if you've not, I was kind of surprised by how small they were now. And I shouldn't be because um, they are quite small. <laughs> but this is the size of them. Okay, now if anyone's got a normal paint, this is the normal size. And this is the 5 mil size. Okay, now I think we're about to read them, so I'm going to read them to you. This one is Indian Red. Okay. Then this one is Hansa Yellow Medium. This one's Pyro Scarlet. Okay. The packaging of these are quite nice, actually. This one is Cerulean Blue um, Chromium, I think it's called. Hold on a second, let me just get to focus for you. There we go. Cerulean Blue Chromium. And then this one is the one that everybody seems to love, which is Quinacridone Gold. I hope I'm pronouncing that correct. Okay. I'm just turning it both ways, just so that when I have to flip the video, um, I hope you can still read the labels. But I will leave a list of the colours in the description. Okay, and for anybody who is um, who what who sorry who reads Jane Blundell's blog, it's actually her 40 mixing colours because the 15th one is the pre is the mixed one that she makes. Um, but there's the 14 plus I think a couple extra that I liked. I'm not entirely sure if they're all hers. Um, buff titanium. Phthalo Green Blue Shade. Oh, sorry. And then Ultramarine Blue. Some more. Now I did try and get the 5 mils wherever I could. These ones, um, the 15 mils, were only in the colours that I couldn't actually get in the 5 mil. And um, these are a lot more expensive. So I didn't want to get the entire range in the 15mm at this moment in time. I was going to replace them out as I use them. Okay, so this one is Quinacridone Rose. Sorry. Can't get to focus right now. Okay. And then this one is Raw Umber. This one's called Gothite, I believe it's called, Brown Ochre. Um, this is what it looks like, the label, in case you weren't quite sure what I said. Okay, and I believe this is the last 15ml one, I got three. And um, this is Pyrol Crimson. This one's a lovely colour. Um, in fact, this one and the Pyrol Scarlet go beautifully together. And Matthew Palmer, I don't know if anybody is aware of Matthew Palmer, but he's a UK watercolour artist with his own um, sort of online tutorials. He has this colour called Natural Grey, I believe you can mix it, I'm not entirely sure what it's mixed out of. Um, and that mixed with those two, sorry, those two, <laughs> makes superb um, red three. So you've got a light red, a medium red and then a darker red. Them two themselves do provide a light and a dark, but um, if you add the Natural Grey it makes it slightly darker. 
Okay, so this one's burnt sienna. Okay. And then this one's stalo blue green shade. Okay. Now just give me one moment. I will find I'll find the colour swatches for you. Sorry, it's disappeared for a second. Um, but I actually have swatched them off the little blue dot, off the little Daniel Smith dots, so that I could do it like, sorry about that, that's actually a reference photo for the painting I did. Okay. This is the swatch test I did with the, um, the Daniel Smith test dots. And this one and this one, um, were me trying to mix a colour. Jane Blundell has a Jane's Grey and it's mixed with um, two of the colours. I can't quite, I know it's definitely ultramarine blue. And I think it might be Scarlet. I think it might be Pyrrol Scarlet. I'm not entirely sure, but it is on our website if you want to double check. I can also find out and post it in the description just in case you, you're wondering what makes the colour. Okay, so we'll start with this end. There we go, that's all the colours. Um, obviously that one turned out the wrong shade, so it'd be there. Um, there we go, that's them. So, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to show you also how I label these to go in my palette. And because I use individual palettes for certain palettes, and I also have one big palette, oh sorry, two, it works out two palettes, with half pans in with all the colours just to, just to make it easier. Okay, so let me just get some of these stickers out. Okay, now for crafting I actually use a range of different stickers, so I have a bundle of stickers. I just have to find the right ones. Okay, the ones I use are these ones. Um, I actually got these from Ryman's. They are reference 650 if you have a Ryman's. If you don't, um, anything that fits on them will do fine. Okay, so. I'm just going to write all the colours down, so I'll take one at a time, and I will do a DS on the load at once, which obviously would indicate Daniel Smith. I'll just do this side and then I'll continue showing you what I do. Okay, so then this one is Burnt Sienna. So then what I do is I write Burnt Sienna on the label. Let's grab a pair of scissors. And I go peel it off. Pull out one of these. So the brand goes on the end because it's thinner. That's it gets shorter. So like this. And um, then you can cut it or rip it. I cut it because I like a neater edge. Um, and then you stick down the extra bit like so. And then we turn it onto its other side, the longer side, and then you can just adjust it to how it fits. And then again, trim the edges off, and then stick the edges down. And then once you've done that, you're ready to fill them up. Okay, so I'm going to do all this, and then um, I'll show you when I've done them all. Okay, so they're all labelled. I must show you a couple. So they're all labelled here. Um, I have done a couple of my Matthew Pan ones which I hadn't labelled up. Um, I'll just try and find this way. Okay, so MP stands for Matthew Palmer, and then I've got natural green and natural green light. And these are the Matthew Palmer colours I was mentioning with the grey, um, but these are natural greens that he does. Now I know you can mix greens, but they're gorgeous greens. Okay, so next, what I do is I just take a piece of scrap paper. Um, I'm sorry if the, the pink's a little bit off-putting, but um, I'm just using what I've got. Okay, what we'll do is we'll use this underneath just to sort of counteract the pink. Um, okay, so I'll show you with my Matthew Palmer colours. So you just unscrew. And then pull up a bit in. And some people fill them to the top, um, I don't, I just fill them a little bit. 
some have filled right to the top and regretted it so now I don't do that and um, I just put a little bit in that way you can also put extra fresh colour in you don't you don't have to feel limited to what's in there okay so now then this is natural green light which goes in the other one so again just squeeze a bit in this one's slightly fuller but it doesn't really matter okay so there's them and you can see the colours and then all I did is I just put them to one side okay the side I usually come to is the side where all the stuff is so just one second okay so let's put them over there and let them dry a little bit over there You'll just let them set just for a little while so you can see I just put it on a piece of cardboard and shift it out of the way. Okay, so and the best thing to do would be to fill the ones I can tell instantly. That way we don't have to wait where I find the colour. Okay, so just squeeze a bit in. And because these colours are very, very small tubes, I'm just squeezing even less in the bottom of the tube. So if you can see, I'm just squeezing real small bit in the bottom and I have spilled a bit on myself which is what I knew I would do hence the, the palette here okay, I'm just using a bit of cardboard just to sort of wipe it up a little bit now next colour Um, we'll go for burnt sienna next. Burnt sienna. Where are you? There we are. Okay, now I must remember to be careful this time when I take the lid off. There we go. Right. So again, just squeeze a little bit in the bottom. Don't do too much. You don't really much to paint with either, so it's not like you're cheating yourself out of a bit of colour. And you can always refill it when it's empty. Because they're so small tubes, I don't want to um, end up using it all in this one when I've got a couple of other parts I want to film. So, Thalo green. Is that Thalo blue? It's Thalo blue, so that's this one. Okay, so Thalo blue green shade. Next. a neat one okay now then I've done five there so I'm just going to um, stop the video and then I'll come back when they're all done and show you okay so they're all finished there they all are and I'm gonna leave them out on my desk just to let them dry a little bit before I put them in the palette just so I don't want them to go everywhere you will notice that obviously the natural green and the natural green light have more colors than everybody else but as you can see the tubes are a lot bigger so I don't mind putting more in. Um, they are this size. I think they might be 15ml like this one. Um, but these are a lot cheaper. These were £5.69. This was, I think it was 9 or £10. A lot of these were £5, £6. So as you can see, big difference in price. Um, I do like the natural watercolour and the natural Matthew Palmer paints. They are my favourite for water for landscapes, but with the birds I just wanted slightly brighter, brighter colours. Now the greens are bright, but I was mainly looking for reds, which were a bit brighter. The natural red's more of a dark sunset red, so that's when I found um, Jane Blundell's palette, and I just wanted to give it a try because I bought the mixing book that she does of, with the 15 colours, so I wanted to give that a try and see what I could come up with. So I'm also going to put these in the big palette, why I've got them out. I just want to tell which order I'm going to put them in so it's pretty helpful that I did this because I think I'm going to do it in this order except for the green is going to go um, in between the blue and the brown I think yeah and I will be putting some other colours in there that are my favourites so I'm just going to plan out the palette before I actually put it in the palette for per se okay so once I've planned it out, um, I'll come back and show you what I've done. Okay, welcome back. Um, I've now filled the palette, as you can see. <clears throat> okay, 
get a quick overview. As you can see, there is a cat missing over here. Um, I'm going to mix Jane's Grey and put that into there. Give that a try. <coughs> okay. So I'm going to start with this this top corner here. And as you'll see, the rock and colours are actually out of order, but they're the natural colours I wanted to put them in. <coughs> the big holes, sort of thing. Right. Okay. So we start natural grey, Matthew Palmer natural grey, Daniel Smith buff titanium, a Daniel Smith Hansi yellow medium, Matthew Palmer natural orange. Um, Daniel Smith Connector on Gold, Daniel Smith Connector on Rose, Pyrrol Scarlet, Pyrrol Crimson, Cerulean Blue Chromium, Ultramarine Blue, and this is Natural Blue. Sorry, and this is Natural Blue. And then Thalo Blue Green Shade, I think it was. Thalo Green Blue Shade, Natural Green, and this is Go Fight, and this is Royal Rumba. And this is burnt sienna and this is Indian red. This will be for Jane's grey and this is natural yellow, which is more of a sandstone yellowy colour. Okay, um, I have made um, a colour sheet that will obviously be coloured in. I just have to get that coloured and then um, I'll pop it with my other colour charts. Okay, I'm not going to colour it right now, so I'm going to end this video and I will post the, the colour chart in a later video but thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed it, if you've got any questions just post a comment below um, and I hope to see you again soon and I will post the, the update on the colour chart as soon as I can um, so yeah, if you if you want, have any questions about these colours or anything like that, just pop a comment down below so I'll see you again soon thank you for watching, bye Hi hey everyone, it's the next day from my video. I just want to show you the colour chart I've just finished. Um, so let's go around the edges. And um, the only the only colours that um don't appear well on the, the camera are the blues. And um, they are darker than they appear here, especially this one. R right up here it is a lot darker than on the screen. Um, let me just see if I can get that any any closer to the colour by moving the light. I know that doesn't seem to make it any better, never mind. Okay, I will take a, a still that will hopefully reflect the colours a little bit better. Um, so that's all the colours. And I see here there is an empty spot. That's for the James Grey that I've yet to mix up. <coughs> Sorry, I've just yet to mix that one up. And um, if you are to do um, this palette, um, these four big ones, you you could obviously fill them there because you want. I put my favourites in them ones because they're bigger, they're bigger and um, it would have been better for me to put them two in the other way because that would have been better there and then that would have been better there but natural grey is one of my most used colours so I wanted that in the bigger the bigger part along with natural blue and natural green natural orange I just put in because I thought having a nice mixed orange would be nicer than not having one <laughs> and that's my favourite orange so that's why I did that I'll just show you the ones I put in the half pans most of them are dry, or dry enough to put away, and um, so I will be putting them in my metal palettes in the next couple of days when I get a chance. Some of them are completely set, so I like that one, and um, this one's quite well set. I have noticed that the cerulean blue chromium spreads out a little bit more when you put it in the palette, so it, it does it seems to be a bit more liquidy, but the colour paints on nicely. That's this colour here. That I mean. That's cerulean blue chromium. Okay, well I hope you enjoyed the haul, um, and I'll post a picture of the still of the colour chart at the end of this video, so very shortly, and I will also post one in the blog for you to have a, a closer look at. So thank you for watching, I hope you've enjoyed, if you've got any questions or, or any feedback just leave me a comment, um, or send me a prayer message, it's entirely up to you, and thank you for watching, bye!